All right, welcome back to an introduction to video projection mapping. This week is all about learning Touch Designer, getting started with it, and seeing where it'll take us. Um, we are going to learn a system called Cantan Mapper next, which is just a really great uh, way of learning how to use Touch Designer to map, to video map in an environment. What you're seeing right now on my camera, on the white boxes there, I have mapped some video onto the edges of the box. We're gonna kinda of go over this process and do it in a little bit more detail. And what you're seeing in my um, screen capture here of Touch Designer is I have set up kind of two little movie networks, movie file, and I've got this one with a weird little jellyfish, and then I've got another one which is the default jelly bean image uh, that comes in um, side of Touch Designer. And I have set them up with this Cantan mapper item. So how did I get this all started? Well, we need to back up first of all and do a few things, okay? So you need to hook up your projector. And if you're on a Mac, you need to set it up as a separate display. So if I go up to my display preferences, just so you have gone in here and it's not mirroring, but there I just flashed it there for a second. Um, I can move that out of the way, but um, Basically, I have my setup and arrangement there, and then I can go back out. And the other thing you need to do on a Mac is <clears throat> you need to be able to hide the little um, menu bar. You don't see it on my screen because I have already hidden it, but you'll see it on yours when you go to separate display. You'll see like a file edit view menu up the top, even if you go full screen. So you need to go to mission control in your system preferences and turn off this thing that says display has separate spaces. And then you have to log out of your user and log back in. That's why I'm having you do it now because it'll be a pain later once you have all your apps open and stuff. So make sure you have that turned off. On a PC, I don't think you have the same problem, uh, but on a Mac, we have this mission control thing that you need to kind of disable. All right, so those are your two things. Set up your display, your projector, so it's a second display. And um, the other thing is on your display resolution, on my main laptop, I have whatever resolution I want. Like by default, I usually do 2048 by 1280. For the projector, make sure to set it to 1280 by 720 because that is the maximum output that the um, non-pro version of Touch Designer can do. If you go full screen and you have it set, your display set to like 1920 by 1080 or, or higher, um, it's going to be floating in the middle of the screen instead of taking advantage of the whole screen real estate. And the projectors you have can't do more than 720p anyway, the 1280 by 720, so it should all be good all the way down the line. I had to do it on mine because my projector is 1920 by 1080, so it made a slightly bigger image. All right, so now you've got all that pre-prep out of the way. How did I create all of this? Well, I under your uh, palette over here on the left, you will see uh, there's a mapping panel, and if you click on it, the first thing down there, well, actually the third thing in the list is Cantan Mapper, and Cantan Helper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start a new document and do this from scratch. So let's go ahead and close this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, bring up Cantan Mapper. If you're wondering who these uh, illustrations are on my desktop, that's from Mobius, the French illustrator. And that's his tribute to Jimi Hendrix and a bunch of his music. So anyway, let's open up Touch Designer. You'll see my screen has gone back to an image as well. Uh, I don't have that set to black right now, so that's why uh, the video of my projection is showing that image. It's another Mobius illustration. All right, so here we are. We're back to just the standard touch designer screen setup. We've got our animated jelly beans. So let's start uh, setting up a Cantan system, okay? So I'm gonna click on mapping. I've got my Cantan mapper right here. I'm going to go ahead and drag a Cantan Mapper instance out onto my network field. And right off the bat, you see it's not connected at all. It'll actually auto connect through a parent child hierarchy. So you don't have to do like an input or output. You can see it only has a vertical uh, input, uh, an output for the parent child hierarchy. And that will connect once we do a few things inside of Cantan Mapper. So to open up the main preferences, Cantan is kind of like a little like plugin system built into Touch Designer, so it's going to open up its own little user interface window. So to do that, you'll see here's open Cantan window. We're going to hit the pulse button, and then we get this lovely Cantan mapper window that comes in. And I think one of the easiest ways to get started 
Um, well, first of all, we're going to want to go to our window options. And you're going to want to set your monitor to number one. It might be a little different on a PC, but number one on a Mac is going to send it off to the separate display, zero being my kind of like home display and monitor one being the separate display. Um, so that's how it designates like where to send its full screen image to. And then obviously you want to stick with the, um, I'm going to go ahead and close that. We want to stick with the resolution of 1280 by 720, okay? All right, so now we're going to come down here to these tools. Let's just start off with what's called a quad. It's a rectangular shape. There's also a free form we can do, but quads are easier to get started with. So I'm going to click on that. And now I can drag out a square on my screen, right? And as I do that, I can see, okay, there's my screen. Now, if I hit toggle output, you'll see it's now going through my projector. And that's only going to do that again if I set my monitor to one under those um, uh, window options. If it was on zero, you're just going to see a pop-up in your main menu, okay? So make sure you set that. So I'm going to close that. Now you can see I've got this, and uh, you know I can, I can change the shape of it if I want. Like I could start mapping just this color right now, which is sometimes easier to my white box system. So I'm going to bring it in here. It gives you that lovely crosshair to show you exactly where that point is, which I really love that about Canton. Very easy to see them, and easy to see the points as you map it, right? So there we go. I can map that square uh, to that part of my full screen projection over there. Now I'm going to do another one here in just a second. And I'm going to go ahead and add another box. So I'm going to create another quad drag it out similar to the other side here and that's going to automatically default to another color so i'm going to bring this one in bring this one in in the right corner and i'm just doing this to my eye how it looks from where i'm sitting it might look different for someone sitting in another part of the room right and then maybe we'll do two more so we'll do another quad just below Let's go ahead and bring those points down. You can see I'm leaving the lid is a little bit different. Um, and I want this to just be a nice clean square. And one more quad on the right side. I'm not gonna do the bottom box. I'll just do these four sides, okay? Over. And last but not least, there we go. Okay, so I've got four quads, they're all mapped out. If you want, you can change the colors of these. You can adjust these numbers and be like 0.5, and that's obviously going to shift the colors. I, I wish there was just like a color picker that you could do it but it's very manual, so I can do like 0.7. There we go, that's a nice different color there to kind of designate that one. And this one, uh, rectangle number three, let's give this like 0.8. There we go, now I've got purple, green, like a little bit of a blue and a pink. Okay, so now that I've got these in place, we're gonna click back on rectangle one that I created, which is this one right up here on the top left. And now you might say, well, like, okay, so how do I bring an image in or an animation or something that I've created inside of Touch Designer? Well, it's really easy. Um, just below the little color picker numbers that I showed you is a, a, a row called texture. So all I have to do is go click and drag this output, video output that I have for the, the final output for that jelly bean animation and drag it into that texture bar. So watch, I'll drag it. And as I'm over it, you get that little white arrow let go, and there it is. And all I have to do to make it go live is click this X button, and now you'll see I have jelly beans up there. I'll add the jelly beans to this bottom right one as well. So I'm gonna go down and click on that one, that's rectangle number four, and I'll bring the jelly beans in there, right? There we go, hit the X, and then it's live. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and save right now before I crash, so let's call this new mapping desktop. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and close Cantan for a second. You'll see it still runs live. Since it's toggled live, it's going to run live, which is great. So now maybe I just come in, and I'm going to copy my movie file in and paste it real quick. 
and I'll do my movie file out and paste it real quick. Cool. There's, it's, it will break this connection here in just a second. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and change this movie file to a different movie on my computer. I've got some stuff here, my DV folder here. Let's go with, I want to get something that's got some motion to it. Bear with me, I've got some stuff that's kind of slow. That should work, let's do that one. Now, oh, weird format on that one, I want something wider. Bear with me one more second. There we go, that's a good one. So that's the one I had at the beginning, it's got some water in motion, right? And maybe I'll just, for fun, I'll add in a um, level, because I always love to have a level to increase brightness and contrast. And then I will add a, let's do the old edge. Everybody loves edge. And then I'll bring that into my out. Okay, and let's, uh, under the levels here, I'm going to increase my brightness. I'm going to give it some serious contrast so it shows up in the edge a little bit better. That looks pretty good. All right, so let's bring the Canton back up again. I'm going to get Canton here. Oh, before we do that, you will notice that now I have a uh, parent-child relationship going between out one and the Canton, right? So it shows that connected when I drag that out into the Canton menu. You're going to see the same thing happen when we drag out two in for my second clip. All right, so I'm going to click on Canton. I'm gonna hit the open Cantan pulse button. Here's my main window. Now I'm gonna drag this new clip onto rectangle two. So I selected rectangle two. You can either select it in the main window there or over here on the left in the, in the kind of stack hierarchy. And now I'm gonna drag that new output that I created onto the texture bar. There it is. And voila, looking pretty good. It's a little dark. And that's where I want to have my, it uh, doesn't always look as good when you go to project it, does it? So let's bring the contrast up a bit and let's bring the brightness up a bit. Maybe that was too much. And then maybe under my edge settings, let's increase the strength. There we go. Now we're starting to see it on my projector. That looks pretty good. Okay, cool. Uh, last one, I'll bring it into the bottom left corner as well. So click on that and drag that onto the texture line and activate it. Whoop, did I not get it? There we go. I had to turn it on and off, just toggle it once and then it showed up. And there we go. We're starting to get a pretty cool setup. I just saved so that we don't crash. You can start to see how I'm mapping this box. Last thing I'm gonna show you is how to do a freeform mapping. Uh, and that's this guy up here, the create freeform. Uh, it's just right next to the creating a quad. And so I'm going to go ahead and come up here and just sort of like, this is for making more organic shapes, not rectilinear ones. Let's just see how that does. Hey, I was pretty close, right? So if I use my little tools here, which is the select keys and, and, and adjust them, I can adjust this curve. Let's bring this down to fit on top of my sphere up there, my white sphere. And bring the bottom up to fit there. Obviously kind of need to raise my projector up to come down at it. I've got a little shadow on the bottom because my projector is too low to the ground right now, but that's okay. We'll make this work. If I was up a little higher, I could have a little rounder shape to this. Still trying to bring it in a little. Bring this side in a little. There we go. And this side as well. We're getting there. I can see a little bit of fall off around the edges up there, but that's okay. Okay, cool. And you know what? I'm going to bring that bottom one down just a little bit. I know there's some overlap on the box, but it still looks pretty good. Okay, so now I have a free form. And for that free form, I'm going to go ahead and drag in the jelly bean onto its texture and activate. Now I have jelly beans on my sphere up there. Now I could, again, they could all use some contrast, brightness, darkness, all of that fun stuff. I'm going to save. We're doing pretty good. Um, let's see. Beyond that, there are lots of different fun tools in here you're going to learn in some of the extended tutorials. Uh, one thing is you can always change the shape. If you click on the other white filled arrow instead of the outlined arrow, 
We can, we can rotate any of these mappings, which is really handy. We can stretch them or scale them, um, kind of get the whole thing scaled. Or you can just move it around too. Just click in the middle and kind of move it around to adjust it where you want. And that works for any of the rectilinear ones as well as the uh, freeform ones. The other one I like to show is soft edge. So say I shrunk this down, right? So I'll shrink that down, get that kind of small in the middle. Um, if I go back, I'm going to go ahead and just click on someone else. But if I click on that, and I'm going to go back to my regular tool there. If I turn on soft edge by clicking this little Actually, you know what, for some reason in my setup, soft edge isn't working right now on the free forms, but I'll do one on the rectangle. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and bring that in, just a hair. What soft edge will do, if I click this little guy, I'm gonna go with uniform. It's the little X next to it. You'll see how it kind of brings it inward. And I can decide the width of that, but it basically feathers the edges of it, so you get this kind of like gradient of color and light that comes in and out, which is really nice, right? So I'm going to go to that one there, and you know what? I think I think I might have undone. Let me bring that strength back up so you can see it. There we go. Bring that up so it's nice and bright. Same thing on here. I could turn on the soft edge on that by hitting the X, and then I could play with the width of that. And there's a couple different types. There's uniform, there's a, a roll-off option, there's a custom one that then I can play with like the steep, steepness of that, um, which gives me a little bit more control over like a gradation of that. So anyway, there's a lot of controls in here you can play with. You'll find there's also a bunch of like manual controls for rotating, translating, pivoting, all of that fun stuff. But I really just wanna get you started with your mapping with Cantan and kind of go from there and see what you can come up with, okay? Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, play around. I can close this and leave it in here. If I want to go turn full screen back off again, obviously click on my Cantan, pulse it, and then just hit this toggle output, and then I my full screen goes away. So that's your introduction to Cantan Mapper. Uh, play, let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for tuning in.